This is the Sitam Worship Service. Welcome to our midweek prayer service. We're glad that you tuned in. We're glad that you're listening. Perhaps you're listening via Hope FM or you're watching on Hope TV or you're streaming live on Sitam Church Online. Thank you for joining our midweek time of prayer. We're going to be lifting up songs to the Lord. The Bible says, speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. So we'll be doing exactly that. And I know that you will be blessed. Your family will be edified. We'll also listen to God's word. And none other than the senior pastor of Sita Mnyeri, uh, Reverend Collins Mwema, will be taking us through a brief uh, devotion. And thereafter, we're going to pray together based on that word. And I'll be leading us in that time of prayer. I, I want to encourage you to gather your family or whoever is in your house. And let's call on the name of the Lord together. Thank you for joining this time of prayer. Hallelujah. I would like to invite you this evening to just worship with us. So wherever you are, I invite you and let's have a celebration here in the name of Jesus. Come on, give him a shout. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Come on, clap your hands together with us. One more time, give him a shout.
appreciate the praise and worship team for that wonderful, wonderful leading in time of song. We thank God for this opportunity to be able to pray and even continue to hear from the Lord. At this juncture, allow me to bring to us a message of the Lord from the book of Joshua, chapter number 20, from verses 1 to verse 9. And I'll be picking it from the Amplified Version. And this is what the Bible says. The Lord said also to Joshua, Say to the Israelites, Appoint among you cities of refuge, of which I spoke to you through Moses, that the slayer who kills anyone accidentally or and unintentionally may flee there, and they shall be your refuge from the avenger of blood. He who flees to one of those cities shall stand at the entrance of the gate of the city and explain his case to the elders of that city. They shall receive him to they shall receive into that city and give him a place to dwell among them. Verse 5 says, If the avenger of blood pursues him, they shall not deliver the slayer into his hand, because he killed his neighbor unintentionally, having had no hatred for him previously. Verse 6, and I like this, says, And he shall dwell in that city until he has been tried before the congregation and until the death of him who is the high priest in those days. Then the slayer shall return to his own city from which he fled and to his own house. Verse 7 says, And they set apart and consecrated Kadesh in Galilee in the hill country of, Na of Naphtali and Shechem in the hill country of Ephraim and Kiriath Arba or Abraham, Ebron in the hill country of Judah. Beyond the Jordan east of Jericho, they appointed Bezel in the wilderness, Tableland from the tribe of Reuben, and Ramoth in Gilead from the tribe of God, and Golan, the third one, uh, in, in, in Bashan from the tribe of Manasseh. Verse 9 of the love verse says, These cities were for all the Israelites and the stranger sojourning among them, that whoever killed a person unintentionally might flee there and not be slain by the avenger of blood until he had been tried before the congregation. What are we talking about here? Allow me to share on our topic, the city of refuge. I know the Bible talks about cities being six, but I will refer to city of refuge. And this is Christ himself, as we'll see from the scripture today. The cities of refuge were six designated Levitical uh, towns in the kingdom of Israel and in the kingdom of Judah, in which the perpetrators of accidental and unintentional manslaughter could claim the right of asylum from the relatives seeking revenge. The six designated cities, as the Bible says, on the east we had Bezel, we had Ramoth, and we had Golan. On the western side, we had Kadesh, Shechem, and Ebron on the western side. Now, let's look at three guarantors that will bring about a real refuge for these uh, perpetrators seeking asylum. The three guarantors. One of the guarantors was the death of the high priest, or rather what uh, the, the, the biblical commentators would call the priestly code. Now, in the priestly code, regulations concerning the cities of refuge stated that once a perpetrator had claimed refuge in that city, he had to be put on tri trial and heard or rather listened by the congregation. And if he was found innocent of the murder, he would then be returned under guard to that city of asylum. Then secondly, under this death penalty or rather death code or the priestly code, this code never accepted any other mode of redemption for the perpetrator except by the shedding of blood, except by atonement that which only made the, 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 the freedom for this perpetrator. And the other thing I would like you to note is after the death of him, who was the high priest in those days? No harm was allowed on this perpetrator. No harm would come on the perpetrator. In addition, the perpetrator was at liberty to leave the city without fear. In fact, in fact verse 6 says, Then the slayer shall return to his own city, from which he fled, and even to his own house. Then th the other thing under the priestly code that we need to, to know is... 
Since the high priest of the city was highly regarded and extremely to be virtuous, his death substituted as an atonement for the perpetrator. However, this was not welcome by the Israelites. This was not welcome by the relatives of the deceased at this time. Now, while the death of the high priest aroused fear on the perpetrator, giving an opportunity for the avengers to revisit the murder, the death of Jesus Christ brought about an eternal peace. The death of Jesus Christ was a guarantee of eternal refuge. And even the Bible clearly reveals that indeed there is life after death. Remember that the days of man are numbered and therefore the lifetime or rather the life of the high priest was not guaranteed. He was still meant to die and therefore his death brought about fear on the perpetrator because he knew I am going back to the town where I murdered someone either accidentally or unintentionally. Christ, brethren, was and still is our high priest. His death and resurrection was and is a guarantee of our redemption from every sin that we commit. There is therefore, the Bible says in Romans chapter 8 verse 1, there is therefore no condemnation for them that are in Christ. Therefore, even if you sinned and ran to Jesus Christ, you are guaranteed of refuge. You are guaranteed of safety. You are guaranteed of redemption. Our accuser has no case against us. The Bible says in Psalm 103 verse 12 that we are forgiven from our transgression. Actually, the Bible says, God forgives and forgets all our transgressions. The Bible declares at the cross, Jesus says, it is finished. And therefore, even your sins are totally forgiven. And therefore, today you can run to Jesus for your refuge, for your eternal peace. Because he is a perfect city of refuge. The other thing I would like you to note is, on the second guarantor of refuge, it was uh, a burden on the number and location of the cities. The Bible reveals, as we have read in this passage of, of Joshua chapter number 20, that there were six cities of refuge. And the six cities were numbered in order to meet the demands of the children of Israel, or rather the population in Israel at this time. A perpetrator needed to run to at least one of the six to seek refuge or to seek asylum. Now, the rationale for Christ being our refuge is greater. It is perfect. It is enough more than the six cities. The Bible reveals in the book of Colossians chapter 1 from verses 14 to 20 that Christ, in Christ we have redemption. In Christ is the exact living image. Christ is, you know, is the living image of the unseen God. The Bible reveals that Christ is the firstborn, you know, of all creation. Verse 16 reveals that in him all things were created in heaven and even that which is on earth. Christ himself existed and is before all things and in him all things all together. Verse 18 says, he is also the head of the church. He is the beginning. He is the first fruit, the firstborn from the dead. Praise the Lord. Verse 19 says, for it pleased the Father for all the fullness of deity to dwell on Christ Jesus. And verse 20 says, through Christ, the Son, to reconcile all things, whether things on earth and even things in heaven. Just a rationale, a rationale to prove that Christ is indeed greater than the six cities of asylum for the perpetrators of accidental or unintentional murder in Israel. The location of the cities of refuge reveals that God being a just God, he had instructed that the cities be equally divided between the kingdom of Judah and the kingdom of Israel. So three on the eastern side and three on the western side. 
Consequently, he made equal provision of the same cities so that no one was disadvantaged on whichever side they dwelt in the land of Israel. The book of John chapter 3 verse 16, the Bible reveals a general scope of God's love through Jesus Christ. And therefore revealing the fact that no matter where you're geographically located in the world, you can access Christ. Yes, we have three cities on the eastern side. We have three cities on the western side. But the Bible, the Bible reveals in John 3.16 that no matter where you are, you don't have to be in the city of, 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 of or any of the six, six, these six cities today to access refuge or to access asylum. But today, wherever you are hearing us from, wherever you are watching us from, the Bible says, for God so loved the world. Therefore, you can access refuge. You can access asylum. You can access safety only in Jesus Christ. No matter your location in the world, the Bible reveals that Christ Jesus is globally available for all of us. The peace of Christ, the healing of Jesus, the salvation of Jesus, his mercy, his grace, his deliverance is unlimited by space. He is our refuge today. Even in a, se- I mean a season of such a pandemic, Christ Jesus is our refuge. The third guarantor for refuge was based on one's flight to a city of refuge. Whenever you committed this accidental or unintentional uh, murder, the only thing that would, could guarantee you of safety was you needed to flee to the nearest city of refuge closest to you. The Bible reveals that immediately you killed someone, you needed to flee to a city of refuge for asylum. Their security was not guaranteed by the road, no matter how wide it was. Their security was not guaranteed by the neighborhood, but their their security was only guaranteed within the walls of the city of refuge. In this COVID-19 season we're in, it has been proved to us that our refuge is not in the position you hold in government. Even the UK Prime Minister was infected by the same. Our refuge, or rather our safety, is not guaranteed by the size of our nation. Our safety is not guaranteed by the wealth of our nation. You can ask China. Our safety is not guaranteed by the industrial revolution of our nation. Our safety is not based on whether you live in a first world or third world nation. Our safety is only guaranteed in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The world over is not safe for anyone. Our only refuge is in Jesus Christ himself. And therefore, I tell us this evening, your safety is guaranteed only when you reach in the hands of Jesus Christ. So don't dilly-dally on the way. Don't dilly-dally on the way. Don't mark time. Run to Jesus. This is a season for you to run to him for your refuge. The book of Matthew chapter 11 verses 20, Jesus says, Come unto me, O ye that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Brethren, it is our time to run to Jesus. For our refuge is our perfect hiding place. Once you have fallen from grace, brethren, Flee to Jesus. Don't mark time. Don't begin justifying your actions. Run to Jesus for your safety. Run to Jesus for your salvation. Run to Jesus for your redemption. Moreover, it was required that the roads leading to the cities of refuge be clearly marked. Even where there were roads crossing and junctions, so that the perpetrator may easily find the path to the city of refuge. The desperate, distressed, depressed, and troubled people have no patience and patience and energy for roundabouts or junctions. They will appreciate a straight path to their safety. 
And therefore, what we need to do today is for those who are in quarantines, for those who are in isolation, for those who are in panic, we need to usher them into the presence of the Lord. We need to usher them to Christ Jesus, their refuge. Peter himself in Acts chapter 3 verses 1 to 9, he pointed the beggar to Christ Jesus. Christ's death tore the temple curtains, breaking the bureaucracy of reaching the Father. Christ Jesus, John 14, 6 says, is the way, the truth, and the life. He reveals to us that we should look no further, but to him alone. He is a solution to your trouble. He is a healer to the sick. He is a salvation to sinners. He is a shelter to the homeless. He is a bread of life. He is a hope of those in isolation. He is a lifter of the downcast. He is the answer to human problems. He is the advocate to the accused in him, the Bible says in Acts 7, chapter 17, verse 28, that in him we move, in him we live and have our being. Jesus Christ is the ultimate refuge for us today and even in this pandemic. I conclude by saying this from the book of Psalm 46, verses 1, that Christ Jesus is our refuge and our strength. He is our very present help and proved help even in time of need. And therefore you can run to him today. You can run to Jesus for your safety. You can trust in the Lord. The Bible says, those who trust in the Lord shall not be put to shame. You can trust in Jesus for your refuge, for your hiding place, even in such a time as we are in our generation today. Brethren, the Bible says, in some, the same some, of 46 and verses 2 the bible says therefore we will not fear though the earth should change and though the mountains be shaken into the midst of the seas though its waters roar and foam though the mountains tremble as at its swelling and tumult there is a river or stream shall make glad the city of god the holy place of the tabernacles of the most high verse 7 says the lord of hosts is with us the God of Jacob is our refuge. Jesus Christ is our perfect, is our final, is our guaranteed city of refuge. I invite you to follow Christ, trust in him. Even if you are a sinner, whether you have fallen from the grace of God, tonight you can run to Jesus Christ. He is a perfect asylum. The physical cities of refuge no longer exist. We have Christ as our refuge. You can trust in the Lord this evening. Would you like to make this prayer with me? Say, Lord Jesus, I admit I am a sinner. I confess of my sins to you. I trust in your redemption. I believe in your saving grace. I accept you to be my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name, I am born again. Thank you for those who have made that prayer with me. The Lord bless you. Amen. What a fellowship, what a joy divine. Leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine. Leaning
Pastor Collins, thank you for that great, great encouragement from the scriptures. Indeed, Christ is our refuge. Christ is the one to whom we can run in this, in this season. And we just want to take time to worship the Lord with our giving. We worship him with our songs. We lift up prayer, but we also take time to worship him as he enables us through our giving. And we will be guided by the announcement. So please take note of the details. It is now time to worship God through our giving. Please prepare yourself to give. We want to thank you for your continued support of God's work even in these very difficult times. We have seen a true demonstration of the Macedonian church, which gave cheerfully and generously in spite of their own desperate situation. We pray that God who sees in secret will reward you openly and abundantly. During this season, we have a common payment platform for all our giving, irrespective of which assembly you attend and also for our visitors. Please make all mobile payments through our M-Pesa and Airtel money payable number which is 933-934. For the account name, please indicate the CITEM assembly you attend. If you are not a member of any CITEM assembly, just write offering in the account space. If you would like to make direct bank deposits, electronic transfers or PESA link, please use the following account. The account name is Christ is the Answer Ministries. The bank is Cooperative Bank University Way Branch. Our account number is 011-280-617-639-0. The SWIFT code is KC-O-O-K-E-N-A. Once again, we want to appreciate every one of you for every support you give, whether big or small, to keep the ministry running. We are however aware that in this season, there are some of us who may not have even food to eat. If you are such a person, please get in touch with your safari group leader and we will see how to help. God bless you. We want to pray through Psalm 46, right where Reverend Collins uh, closed off on. He pointed us to Psalm, Psalm 46. Uh, this is a great Psalm for us to pray in this season. God has not left us without uh, means to pray in this season. Obviously, based on what has been happening in our, in our world, it is easy for us to feel lost, to feel lost on how we can pray or to feel as if our prayers are hitting the, the, the ceiling or the brass heavens. But I want to encourage us that God has given us a prayer book, a whole book in the Bible through which we can pray. And this is the book of Psalms. And so for our time of prayer this evening, we want to pray through Psalm 14. Psalm 46, uh, I read the first three verses. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. And the psalmist, the sons of Korah say, Selah. They call us to pause, to slow down, to reflect. And so we're going to pray through this psalm over the next while. And I want to encourage you to join us, our boys and girls at home, young people at home, our family members, leaders of the homes. Let's pray together through this psalm. 
Our Father and our God, we thank you that you are our refuge and strength. We thank you that as we have heard in your word this evening, that in Christ we have a refuge, we have a city of refuge. We who by, by nature are sinners, sinners who have fallen short of the glory of God, we thank you that you have not left us in isolation. We thank you that you have given us a refuge through, through your Son, O oh God. And, and this evening we run to him. We run to him with everything that we have. We run to him with our burdens. We run to him, Lord, with our worries, with our anxieties, with our fears. And Lord, with the son of Korah, the sons of Korah, Lord, we join in their song and we declare that the Lord is our refuge. The Lord is our refuge and the Lord is our strength. Lord, we pray that you would be strength, spiritual strength, O God. As Paul declares in the book of Ephesians where he says, strengthen us, Lord. Lord, in our inner man, we are praying that you would strengthen your people in this season and in these days. Lord, we pray that you strengthen our inner man in the name of Jesus. Strengthen us spiritually, O God. We are also crying out to you for, for physical strength, O God. We particularly lift up all those who are unwell, those ones who are in hospitals, O God, those ones who are in ICU, those ones who are in critical care those ones whose lungs are giving way and they are Lord they have been held up together by ventilators Lord your word declares the sons of Korah declare God you are our strength and we know that it is not just spiritual strength we know that it is physical strength as well because you are the one who gave us the breath of life you are our creator and every strength that we need it is found in you O oh God so this our Lord we we lift up our voices and we pray for those who are unwell. We pray for those who may not even be in hospitals, oh God, for one reason or another. Perhaps it could be resources, Lord, that hinder them from accessing, Lord, the medical attention that they need. This evening, we lift them up to you, oh God, and we pray that you will be their physical strength. Lord, we also pray that you will strengthen all the healthcare workers, the men and women who are the heroes in this season. They are in the front lines of danger, O oh God. They are attending to those who are unwell. And Lord, in so doing, they are placing themselves in harm's way. Father, remember them, Lord. Remember them with your strength. Remember our nurses. Remember the doctors, O oh God. Lord, we also lift up all those who are leading in this time of crisis. We lift up government officials. Lord, we lift up our cabinet secretary. Secretary, O oh God, in charge of health. We lift up the National Emergency Response Committee. We lift up, Lord, our president and the leaders of government. We lift up the world leaders before you, that you would be their strength. They need, Lord, they need to be supplied with strength, mental strength in this time. Lord, we pray for ourselves, those who are joining in this broadcast, O oh God, those who are streaming or listening in on air. Lord, those who are following on Hope TV, we pray for ourselves, oh God. We pray for our families that you will grant us the mental strength that we need. There are many people, Lord, whose hearts, whose souls are giving way to depression, giving way, oh God, because of mental health issues. We pray that you will grant us resilience, oh God. The psalmist declares, God is our refuge. God is our strength. And so, Lord, we look to you for spiritual strength. We look to you for emotional strength. We look to you for physical strength. We look to you for every strength that we need in this season. And friends, the Bible goes on to say that the Lord is a very present help. He's present with you in that car as you're listening as, and praying together with us. He's present with you in that living room or bedroom or whatever you, uh, room you're watching from. He is present with us. And we obviously know that these are times of trouble, but I'd like us to acknowledge with the psalmist that God indeed remains our very present help in this season. And Lord, we thank you that as we've heard again through uh, the encouragement of your word, 
that Christ is our city of refuge, that Christ is Emmanuel, God with us, that we are not alienated, we are not far away, we are not exiled from the presence of our God, that because of the finished work of Calvary, because of the work that you did on the cross, Lord, we have access into the Father's presence and we can be able to say you are present with us. We thank you that because of that finished work of the cross, we enjoy the blessings of the outpouring of your spirit. We thank you that your spirit your spirit is close to us. He's closer to us than a brother. He's closer to us than a spouse. He's closer to us than a best friend. He's closer to us, Lord, than any digital connection. You are our very present help in the time of trouble. And Lord, you know that your people are in trouble. You know that industries are in trouble. You know that locally and globally your people are in trouble. Nations are in trouble, Oh God, we need your help in this time. And so with the psalmist, we acknowledge that you are present with us. You have not abandoned us. You have not forsaken us. You have not taken leave. You have not taken leave of absence. You are not away from us, O oh God. You are very present with us even in this moment, O oh God. And Lord, the psalmist goes on to say, therefore we will not fear. So I pray that Heavenly Father, you would strip fear away from our hearts, O God. Lord, Paul declared to his spiritual son, Timothy, that the Lord has not given unto us a spirit of fear. And friends, that's recorded for us in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. And maybe you have been having a lot of struggles of fear. I want us to take some time and to lay those fears before the throne of our God. Whatever fear it is, the fear of the unknown, the fear that you're relatives may be among those who may be claimed. The fear of our financial constraints, whatever fears you're grappling with this hour, let's take them to the Lord in prayer. Our Father, we thank you that you have not given to us a spirit of fear, but you've given us a spirit of power, a spirit of love, a spirit of a sound mind. Lord, we shall not fear. When we face the uncertain future, we shall not fear because we know that that uncertain future is in the hands of a very certain God. It is in the hands of the God who holds all time in his hands. It is in the hands of a God who is not on break. God immutable, God unchangeable, God who is sovereign. We will not fear when we watch the news and we see headline after headline reporting all manner of statistics. Lord, we will not fear. We will not fear even when we go through the valley of the shadow of death. We shall not fear because God, you are our refuge. Lord, I pray that families shall not fear, that safari groups shall not fear, that young and all shall not fear, that boys and girls shall not fear, that we shall not be afraid, that those ones who have been affected, Lord, financially, they shall not be afraid because, God, you remain our refuge and you remain our strength and you will hold us fast. You will see us through. Lord, even though the earth gives way, even though the mountains are moved and they are thrown into the heart of the sea, even though this crisis, oh God, is of such epic proportions. Lord, with the psalmist tonight, we declare we will not fear because you are our refuge. You are our strength. You will hold us fast, oh God. We thank you, Lord. We give you all the praise that you are seeing us through. We shall not fear. Lay that fear down before the feet of our God. Lay down the anxiety. Lay down the worries. Lay down the stress. Lay down every, every negative emotion, every distress that you may be having as we just lift up these prayers before the Lord. Lay those fears down because God has not given you a spirit of fear, but he's given you a spirit of power, of love and of a sound mind. And the psalmist goes on to say, verses four through seven, there is a river 
whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The nations rage, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice, the earth melts. And wherever you're, you're following us from, let's read loudly from our homes and let's read verse 7 together. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Let's read it one more time. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress seller. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for this great picture you've given us in Psalm 46. That even when a city is under lockdown, when a city is besieged, when Jerusalem, the city of God, was besieged, you did not leave them without help. You gave them a river. You gave them a supply that their enemies did not know about. And so the psalmist declares there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. And this evening we thank you that we too, though under lockdown or partial lockdown, Lord, though in isolation, you have not left us without the, the, the supply of your spirit. We thank you that there is a river that supplies. There is a river that brings joy to the people of God. We thank you for the ministry of your spirit. We thank you that your spirit is a resident in the hearts of God's people. We thank you that Lord your spirit is at work within us to give us songs of deliverance in this season. Your spirit is at work within our families to turn our mourning into dancing, to turn our depression into gladness, to turn our stresses into relief. We thank you Lord that there is a a river that brings joy to the city of God. Lord, I pray that joy will break through over your people this evening, over our families this evening. Lord, we've read and we've heard of families falling apart, of couples filing for divorce in this season. We have heard of many being separated. We have heard that this time of lockdown has exposed areas of weaknesses in families. Yet we pray that that this will become a reality, that verse 4 will become a reality in many families tonight. Let there be gladness in homes. Let there be gladness in some marriages that are on the verge of falling apart. Let there be gladness, Lord, between parents and their children, between fathers and their sons, between mothers and their daughters. Lord, turn the hearts of children to their parents and parents to their children, Lord. Lord, we pray Pray, let there be gladness in the families. Let there be gladness in the home units. Let there be gladness among siblings, oh God. Perhaps some siblings, oh God, have been relating, oh God, in antagonistic ways. Lord, they've been, they've been having sibling rivalry, oh God. But tonight we lift up prayer, asking, Lord, that let verse 4 become a reality. Let there be gladness in our homes. Let there be gladness. Gladness, oh God, over that person who's alone because of this isolation. They celebrated Easter all alone. They celebrated their birthday or whatever it is all alone. And Lord, depression is setting in. Lord, we pray that there will be gladness in the hearts of your people. Spirit of God, we call on you tonight. We know that you are the one who's like that secret stream flowing in our hearts, bringing songs of deliverance, reminding us of scriptures that we need in this season. We pray, let there be gladness. Friends, the Bible says in verse 7 that the Lord of hosts is with us. And so as we draw to a close, I'd like us to pray that the presence of God would be our reality in this season. God's presence, this is the, the most treasured thing we need in this time. So let's pray that the presence of God would be real in our lives. Our Father, we 
know that in this pandemic, you're teaching us various lessons. Lessons that should not be wasted. And so we are asking you, Lord, that we would experience a closer walk with you. Just like these people who are in a lockdown, they were in crisis, but they say the Lord of hosts is with us. So I pray for great revival over the church of Christ, over the families, Lord, that are represented in this time of prayer. Lord, I pray that you would revive us with your presence, that you would give us times of refreshing by your spirit, that, Lord, we would know the ministry of revival. We would know what it means to turn back to the Lord in prayer. We would know what it means to turn away from our sin, to turn away from rebellion, to turn away from hatred of the Lord, that our hearts would be filled with love for the Lord once again, that our prayer lives would be set on fire, that, Lord, our prayer closets would be alive and vibrant once again. Lord, revive us, we pray. With the hymn writer we sing and we pray, hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thine the glory. Revive us again. Revive us with your presence. Revive our prayer lives. Revive our passion and hunger for your word. Revive our passion for evangelism. Help us to share the good news to others. Help us, Lord, to experience your presence, that though we are isolated from one another, Lord, help us to experience Experience your presence closer than we've ever experienced before. We thank you that, Lord, you're helping us to be still. You're helping us to know that you are God and that you will be exalted and that you will even, you who causes wars to cease, you will cause this pandemic to cease. You will cause this virus to cease. You who causes external threats like war and you cause them, Lord, to come to an end. Tonight, oh God, we are asking by your mercy, cause this pandemic to cease. Put not even a pause button, Lord. Put a full stop on this thing. Bring it, to its, bring it to its deathbed, this which has claimed so many, and help us to be still and to know that you are God. We thank you that the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Amen and amen. Thank you for joining us for prayer. May the Lord continue to minister to us and encourage us as we call on his name. Amen.
You are the Savior with the spiritual touch. Praise you. We just want to say a very big thank you. We want to say a big thank you to our God. He has been so gracious to many of us as individuals, as families, and as a nation during this season of lockdown and anxiety. As a nation and as a continent, we have seen God hold down the spread of the coronavirus beyond the earlier predictions. He is indeed answering our prayers. We especially want to thank him for protecting our medical workers who are at the front line of fighting this pandemic. We have also seen God provide miraculously for many of us. We are therefore confident that he will continue blessing those of us in need. And now we want to thank our safari groups that have continued meeting consistently through various digital platforms, many for the very first time. Special thanks to those safari groups across the country that have reached out on their own initiative to support those in need around them. Jesus said, whatever you have done to the list of this, you have done to me. And then to all of you who have remained faithful to the Lord and have continued to give sacrificially to sustain the ministry of Satan during this season. We say a big thank you. May God continue to bless you and your family and may he shower you with the richest blessings to the glory and honor of his holy name. Amen. <laughs>